All right, good morning, folks. Let me get this turned on here. We'll get rolling. All righty. Okay, so today we'll be talking about um, making Fetch happen. You can see uh, some social handles there at the bottom. And if you're confused about what kind of Fetch we're going to be talking about today, this is a little visual demonstration. Um, you know, it's a really great sport. Um, it's really difficult. It revolve, involves a lot of coordination, you know, a lot of strength, a lot of practice. So, um, so today we're going to start off, you know, it takes some biomechanics, usually involves a partner. This one's named Lincoln. Um, it's a work in progress, though. <laughs> but really, Fetch, as we know it, starts back in 2005 with AJAX, Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And this is a concept that basically let browsers talk to servers, is the sort of simplest way to put it. And the AJAX protocol, or whatever you want to call it, is, uh, was accessed through an API called XML HTTP request. And if you ever had to write code like this, I'm sorry. I'm so much happier with the way we write networking interfaces today. But it all started with a specification, XHR. And the XHR specification was originally introduced by a working group called um, WhatWig, Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group. And then it got passed along to the World Wide Web Consortium, and then back to WhatWig. And to deal with those early politics, I will spare you the details. But um, basically, to put it, uh, to, to sort of summarize, there was a standard, it was specified, and browsers implemented that standard. And that's how we had applications, web applications, be able to run across the old, you know, uh, Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera, Chrome, etc. In 2013, a new um, specification came out from W3C called Service Workers, and this um, and this this specification was sort of a way to it was what we deem as a programmable network proxy. And programmable network proxies essentially say, hey, my website can't reach the server right now, but I still want it to be functional. I still want it to serve some data or do something. And that's where the service workers came in. And, and this was a really great sort of like next step towards, all right, we've got web applications and they talk to things, they use those network requests, but sometimes that network isn't available, so let's make things a little more um, easier for people to use. We talk about asynchronous programming a lot. And this is where we got promises. The promises API was introduced to make this asynchronous programming easier. It was able to make this things like surface workers um, easier to use. So you can say, hey, my website, I would like this data, but I don't, I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Maybe it gets back to me, maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then that's okay. I will invoke my service worker and things will be all right. But something was still missing. We needed better networking interfaces because the, the, that original XML request I showed at the beginning was, was still quite a mess to use and was, was definitely not easy. And this is where fetch came in. And so we're all very familiar with a, a chunk of code like this. And in three simple lines, you had um, your data. Now, await didn't come at the original. We had then callbacks and whatnot. But the point being is fetch allowed um, networking interfaces to just be simpler and easier to use for everyone. They employed modern async patterns. They had class-based networking interfaces that we all know and love, the request object, the, the headers class. And it was based on the existing core standard. And the core standard, cross-origin resource sharing, um, also created by W3C, was very important for, inter for, for browser security. It's why we're able to like use credit cards and store emails and passwords in our browser nowadays because um, the World Wide Web consortiums were like, hey, we want to make sure you're safe when you do this and that your, your password isn't going to get like shared across 50 million different websites and sometimes it still happens and Cores hasn't solved all of our problems and if you've ever faced a Cores issue while building a Node.js app, I feel for you because it's the worst. Nonetheless, more standards came across. There was the URL standard, the stream standard, and the abort controller standard. Um, and so all of these came together, um, and this is what sort of, or this is what was being added to our browsers over time. And it was a timeline. Remember, 
uh, Ajax was 2005, Service Workers was 2013, and then Promises came around the similar time. URL, I actually had a hard time finding a date for, but the Streams API was 2015, the Abort Controller API was 2017, and you can see over time, our browsers have, or the browsers worked to develop this Fetch API. And this was awesome, and this was really great. We had this wonderful, safe API that was extensible, it was easy to use, developers could build wonderful asynchronous programs with, without a lot of headache. And what this led to is this concept of isomorphic JavaScript. This is something we all know and love, where you can take this chunk of code and you can run it anywhere JavaScript works, because every, well, we'll say every JavaScript engine should know what an array is. Every JavaScript engine should know what a function is. Every JavaScript engine who matches the current spec of JavaScript knows the reduce uh, method and how that works. And so the idea is that you can run this code anywhere you can run JavaScript. But what about this code? On the browsers, using the document API, this works just fine. Essentially, if there's a document global, as specified by certain browser standards, not the language standard, this code works. But this is still JavaScript, because if you tried to run this in Python, I guarantee you it wouldn't work very well. But if you ran it in Node.js, it also won't run very well, because there's no such thing as a document global, or at least there isn't today, and I, I don't know if there ever will be. <laughs> and in today's modern world, we have a lot of environments to contend for, and this isn't even the full list. Um, in fact, I, I kind of love this slide because when I gave this talk a few months ago, I didn't even have the Bun logo up there, and I kind of forgot about the Safari logo, so I messed that up, but I added the Safari one, and now we've got Bun up there, and hopefully there's gonna be, this, this slide's gonna like cascade, and we're gonna have 16 different environments in the future because, well, we want interoperable JavaScript. And the idea goes back to, okay, if you can run JavaScript on all these platforms, and that, you know, the simple um, little, you know, sum array function can work on all of them, but this one can't. But the Fetch API is so wonderful, what's stopping us from running Fetch or adding Fetch to all of these different environments? In Node.js, it kind of started way back in 0.3.6 with the request API. And we all are familiar with this one. It actually kind of looks like that XML, uh, XML API I showed at the very beginning, where you sort of have to use like event handlers to, to use it. It's not as simple as just request and then magic string. But what this underlying API let people do was develop a bunch of different options. We got the actual request library that was only recently, in the past couple of years, de uh, deprecated. We have Got, which is still actively used. We have Axios, which is still very widely used. And we even have NodeFetch, which up until recently and still does, is polyfilled in a ton of environments to deliver that fetch experience. But my favorite comic, you know, how standards proliferated. And you know, we start with, there's 14 competing standards. There's all these different ways you can make a network request. So how do we solve this problem? Well, well wait, I have an idea. Another standard. Now there's 15. So where does this leave us? Well, let's, let's think about, you know, as much of a joke this is, the idea is, yes, the fetch standard is what a lot of people are familiar with. This is what every browser developer knows and loves. And even more so, a lot of backend developers, too, are using Fetch heavily, either polyfilled from Node Fetch or some other implementation. And why is this? Well, there's a variety of different pros and cons to each networking library that exists. For, for Got, it's so simple. Like, I was able to include the import statement, and this chunk of code is still only three lines. That is how simple some of these networking libraries are. But then there's efficiency. This is one of my favorites. This is Undici using the Stream API, and oh man, this one makes me excited because you can run some really fast networking code, but 17 lines for a single network request? Not for everybody. And then there's familiarity. So here's that Fetch API from, the, from Node Fetch, still only a couple lines, and it's really great. And so clearly, Fetch has a lot to offer, and the community as a whole has asked for Fetch and has worked towards landing it in something like, in, in our runtime, Node.js. 
And so for a sort of squished timeline, we can start all the way back in 2014 when GitHub decided to add fetch, and then people tried isomorphic fetch, which was sort of a balancing act between the browser and node environment. And then we got node fetch in 2015, that was when it was first created. 2017, NPM tried to make fetch happen. And then over time, we had cross fetch, which was another kind of isomorphic attempt. Then there was add fetch to Node.js back in 2018. This was a, um, I, I forget exactly where this, this one landed, but you can see the, the, the issue numbers sort of double every time someone tries to add fetch to Node.js. <laughs> because in 2019, we are like, you know, another 10,000 um, issues later, and we're finally trying, now we're trying to vendor the node fetch package. That one did not land either. In 2020, this was recently when Undici sort of reached its version one, I took a stab at implementing fetch with Undici. That sort of made its way into Undici, and then from Undici, we added it to Node.js. And finally, on February 1st, 2022, we actually added fetch to Node.js. It's gonna be a global fetch, and it's still experimental in version 18, and it's available even as early as version 16 using the experimental fetch flag. And this is a huge amount of work because there was a ton of other Node.js and Wig APIs that needed to be added, and this is, um, this is a breakdown of the URL API from, from Wig was added way back in version six and seven. And then it wasn't until versions 14 that the, that the next Wig API necessary for fetch was adopted. And this was event target. A board controller came next. And you can see some of these were not, now, nowadays they're non-experimental, but they were only non-experimental in version 15. We're still using 16 today, 18's around the corner, 19 releases around the corner, and web streams is still currently experimental. Structured clone, we heard a lot about yesterday was only added in version 17 as non-experimental, which was pretty good, kind of a jump forward. But then form data was added in 16 plus, and this is what only added whenever fetch is enabled. So I'm not even sure exactly how form data is gonna play out in Node.js, but it is a part of the fetch implementation. And then web crypto, added just in version 18 and still experimental, will let us do some of the, more, the newer fetch, um, parts of the fetch uh, implementation and we're only getting started because while all this work has been done in Node.js to get fetch um, available and to get fetch into our users' hands, a new community group was started by a lot of awesome companies all developing runtimes, uh, including members of Node.js called Winter CG. And I love this name because as you've heard, I'm a professional ski instructor, I love the winter, I'm wearing a hat that says, you know, protect our winters. So the fact that the working group that hopefully can push the fetch standard forward in run times is called Winter CG, huge fan. Um, and we're currently hard at work. So this is a quick screenshot of the Winter CG Fetch repo. We have 10 open issues of discussions of all different topics, ranging from how we're gonna handle cookies to the request response differences to even the very first issue down at the very bottom, number one, standardized supported subset of Fetch. The idea is, on the, on the, on the runtimes, we don't need cores. So we can ignore a huge chunk of the fetch API, and if we can say, okay, no more cores, no more cores headers in fetch when it comes to being inside of a server, inside of a runtime, that will be something that all of us can standardize around, from Bun to Node.js to Deno to, to workers from Cloudflare to the Edge runtime from Vercel. Everyone can do the same thing, and now we can achieve a similar interoperability that the browsers have. And finally, one of the, the current next steps in the fetch work is we're adding the Wig fetch spec to the winter CG, and then we're going to iterate on it. We're going to remove sections. We are going to take blocks of it and say, no, 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 we're gonna do things differently. The API is gonna do this instead, or the API will just sort of halt execution here. And so if you're interested in getting involved, the winter CG um, is open, is working in public, so you can check out the repo, you can check out the PRs. There isn't a bunch of work done just at this moment. It's very new. It happens every two weeks we meet and we discuss this. So I always like to end these talks with a big thank you to contributors. Without all of the work going all the way back to the browser specifications in 2005, which you know, which created Ajax in the first place, we wouldn't be where we are today with networking APIs, even in the back end for Node.js. So 
Thank you through and through to everyone involved for landing APIs in Node.js and now the folks involved in Winter CG. And I'll leave you today with another picture of my dog. Thank you. You can find me on these socials. Please reach out if you have any questions at any time. Thank you for coming to my talk today.